My fellow South Africans, we have a crisis taking place across our border. For years, our government has watched while ZANU-PF destroyed the country once capable of feeding much of Southern Africa. This crisis impacts our country deeply, and it is now time for a new approach. It is time for hard diplomacy. We must adopt the strongest and harshest policies against an oppressive government and not punish the people of Zimbabwe. This should start by freezing the assets of ZANU-PF leaders in South Africa and banning them from entering our country until there's real reform in that, in that beloved country. For further discussion on the abduction of uh, activists and political activists uh, who fled Zimbabwe, we are now joined via Skype by uh, Kennedy Mandaza. He is ZANU PFSA spokesperson and he joins us now live via Zoom. Good afternoon to you, uh, Mr. Mandaza, and thank you so much for joining us here on the SABC News channel. Good afternoon. Thank you. All right. All right. So let's just get your reaction firstly to uh, the video footage that's currently making the rounds that shows the abduction of activist uh, Tawanda Mucheiwa. What's your take on that? Um, I've seen it for the first time. Uh, we hear a few minutes ago. But uh, as ZANU PF and all peace loving Zimbabweans, we do not condone abductions, be they real or fake. Regrettably, of late, we have preoccupied ourselves uh, on discussing these issues that relate to abductions. As ZANU-PF, we view the abductions as a serious act which is meant to dent the image of the party and the country, and it does also scuttle the efforts of the current leadership to recover the economy for the benefit of the majority of the citizenry who needs help and security during these trying times please allow that me have been please allow me COVID 19. yeah allow me to just come in there uh, my question to you is what's your take on this footage because you say that you condemn uh, any um, abductions that may be happening but po our fingers are pointing at zanu pf uh, from what i heard from um, the voice that was on the uh, footage uh, there was no uh, mention of ZANU PF. But and that's, but, but that's what that's what that's what activists. That is what many political activists, even opposition parties, have been saying. Even ordinary uh, civilians in Zimbabwe have been saying that uh, uh, ZANU PF is uh, behind all this that is happening and the torture that that's been happening to the people of Zimbabwe. For what benefit would that be to ZANU PF to torture its own citizens? ZANU PF is supposed to be protecting the citizens it is supposed to be working to make sure that the zimbabweans are live in peace and one would wonder therefore what is the benefit of zanu pf in abducting its own citizens but these that are these are these are the very same these are the very same individuals some of them we've been running the stories on zimbabwe for the past few weeks now some of uh, the organizers for the march that was supposed to have taken place a few weeks ago were arrested some of them uh, received some threats uh, and these are the people who are against uh, what we call human rights violations on the Zimbabweans. We should, we, should, we should separate arrest and abduction. Because when we talk about arrest, then they have been uh, implemented by the police. But abductions, we, as ZANU-PF, we are saying we condemn them. We do not want anyone to be abducted. That is why we are saying any act of abductions that is taking place in the country should be condemned and those that are doing it should be brought to book but the question is condemning it's just a say what action will zanu pf take to ensure the safety of its people more so the activists who've been at the forefront fighting for the rights of ordinary uh, zimbabweans it it is the responsibility of the law enforcement agency in the country to make sure that they follow leads such as the video that we have seen here if it is presented to them to make sure that they unravel and find out who is it who is abducting our citizens who is it who is behind the abductions of these people because it does not benefit anyone in the country neither does it benefit zanupi of his work because it has scuttled the efforts that the leadership is putting in place to make sure that we recover the economy 
And we, we've seen President Emerson Nangagwa dismissing uh, allegations of uh, uh, abductions, uh, basically accusing civic society organizations and the opposition uh, for staging uh, these abductions. So he says that this is to paint uh, the ruling party in, 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 in a bad picture. That is what I'm also saying, that uh, as much as nobody has come up and proven most of the uh, alleged abductions, we need to use a case in point of the video that have come to the, it, uh, that people are having or have seen now to prove in the, uh, who is it that is behind these abductions. It would also benefit ZANU PF to know who it is that is denting the image of the party and the image of the country so that we do not continue to engage in productive things that are supposed mm -hmm. to better the lives of the people. But I think the question is why would individuals or people try to dent the image of the ZANU PF? Would you know uh, who may be behind all of this? Well, as much as um, we, as much as there are said to be allegations at the pointing at ZANU PF, for what benefit would ZANU PF abduct its own people? We would have suspected that anyone else who is doing it, it who is doing it in order to dent the image of the country, to dent the image of ZANU PF, so that the progress that is needed to recover the, the, the economy of, ZAN, of Zimbabwe does not take place. And it gives mileage possibly to those that are undertaking those abductions if, uh, if they are found. So you are basically denying that there are any abductions uh, uh, that are carried out by the ruling party. And part of what also the ZANU-PF has been denying is that there are any human rights violations that are happening in that country. Am I right? We are denying that ZANU-PF is abducting people because there is no reason whatsoever for ZANU-PF to abduct anyone at any given time, particularly its own citizens. The, the reason I'm asking you about the issue around human rights violations in that country is because a, a caucus of diplomats from Zimbabwe have been calling for an end to what they call violations of human rights in the country. So let's just talk about these calls. And perhaps the manner in which ZANU-PF itself responds to this particular issue. Well, our point is that if the caucus is sincere, on calling for the end of these alleged human rights violations. They should use the same voice and the same platform to amplify the calls for the removal of the illegal sanctions imposed on Zimbabwe. Because these uh, illegal sanctions on their own, they are a serious violation of human rights and an act of war on the innocent Zimbabweans. And in addition, diplomats, unlike activists, they have channels with which they can engage the Zimbabwean government if they feel they have any concern. For them to resort to megaphone di diplomas, it brings doubt on their sincerity given the historical relations that we have had with some of these, uh, with some of the countries whose diplomats are coming out now and say uh, there should be an end of violations. Yet they have not called at any given time for the end of uh, sanctions that have called untold suffering and human rights violations on many of our of Zimbabweans. And you talk about engagement. If there is nothing that ZANU-PF hides from the rest of the world, why was the envoy that was sent by President Ramaphosa to Zimbabwe not allowed to speak to other people um, within the country, uh, within the, the ZANU-PF itself? Is there anything that the party is hiding from the rest of the world? There is nothing that the party is hiding, and uh, I, I would want to believe that the envoys that went to Zimbabwe met the president of the Republic of Zimbabwe, and it is them who have a, few, a full understanding, a full report of what exactly transpired. And in the report or snippets of the reports that we have had, we haven't had that uh, they were denied, but we, um, I remember the, uh, the minister of uh, international relations here saying that there is an opportunity that people can go back and engage all other stakeholders in Zimbabwe, but which were not fulfilled in this particular journey that they went. So there is nothing that ZANU-PF would want to hide 
people are expected. That's why we have even asked the, even journalists to go into Zimbabwe to verify some of the things that we are uh, we are hearing coming out, uh, which is which are said to be coming out from Zimbabwe. All right. So just in conclusion, uh, sir, tell me, uh, there's been a lot of comments really about how things are looking in Zimbabwe now. And my question is very direct to you as ZANU PF. Are you any different from the Mugabe rule as it is now? We are, yes. We, there are quite a number of changes that have taken place in the country ever since the, the, the coming in of the new dispensation. Uh, they have uh, reformed quite a number of other policies that had been put in earlier. They, we have opened up the media space. There is the kind of discourse that you see now, which other people are abusing, is as a result of the opening up of the um, space by the uh, current president, mm -hmm. which have seen so many things are happening which have never happened before. So there is so much difference with what we had during the uh, the former president's it, era and the current dis dispensation. The, 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 reason, for, the reason for that question uh, to you, sir, is that there is also some diplomats saying that the judiciary of Zimbabwe has been captured the same way that uh, Mugabe's era was captured. That is why those who are arrested are in detention, a whole lot of them without trial for a long time. And this is against international law. Let's talk about this very quickly. Well, according to the diplomats, I think what constitutes to them capture of the ju judiciary is when people fail to get bail. They need to give us that definition. But one other thing that I might need to ask is, is it when, when judges and magistrates give decisions at variance with their wills or wishes, is it then when we say that the judiciary is captured? The Zimbabwean judiciary system is one of the independent arms of the state, and we believe in their professionalism. As a party, we have no role in interfering with the judiciary system, we have cases that we have uh, that have been brought to the courts, and the judgments that the courts have passed were not in our favor, or we did not expect them. All right, because no. we believe in the rule of law and the independence of the judiciary, we accepted the judgment. All right, and we expect diplomats to act as much. Time they should not insinuate that when something has not been done in their favor. The judiciary is captured. I wish we could dwell a bit on this. Uh, some of the activists who, who have been in detention without trial for the longest time, but we've run out of time. We really, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for coming through. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. Kennedy Mandaza, ZANU PF, uh, SA spokesperson, talking to us about uh, the latest in Zimbabwe. A quick break.